Let's take the example of the locus that we had discussed during the beginning of this module. Let's say each of these lockers have a number and whenever we define some variables, one of these lockers is assigned to that variable or that particular variable is given a locker. Similar to the locations or the lockers that we see here, there are tens of thousands of locations in the RAM of computer and each of them have their own addresses. For this example to understand pointers, let's take a variable called num. And let's say that when the program is executed, the variable num is given the locker number 5. So locker number 5 is given the name num. Now when we write, when we assign a value to this variable, we say num is equals to 20. The value 20 gets stored in the location 5 or in the locker number 5. Now here is where pointers come in. When we say num, we mean locker number 5 and the value there is 20. So a pointer can be used to store this address of num. The address of num here is 5 while the value is 20. And let's say this is the locker, locker number 5 where the value 20 is stored. So pointers are nothing but pointers are a kind of variables that store the addresses of other variables. So if we define a pointer and tell it to store the address of num, instead of storing 20, it will store 5, the address of this variable. So to define a variable as a pointer, we write the pointer type and the pointer name with a star. So the name of the pointer is ptr, the type is integer and the star signifies that this is a pointer. This will be used to store the address of a integer data type. So if we have mentioned int num, we need a pointer of type integer. The integer here signifies that we are going to store the address of an integer. Similarly, there can be character, flow, double, anything. The data type of the pointer must be same as the data type of the variable whose address we are going to store. So let's say the pointer is given the location 9. This variable is stored in the location 9. Now we write ptr equals to ampersand num. Ampersand num means the address of num. So whenever we write ampersand num, the address of num is 5. So 5 gets stored in ptr. So we have given ptr equals to ampersand num. The address of num is 5. 5 gets stored in 9. So whenever we print the value of 9, we will get 5. So we can print the value of 5, we get 20. Value of 9 is 5. Let's see this working in a program. So I have uh, opened, I have opened a new C program here and uh, let me remove this line and declare a variable int num and I will give it a value 20, int num equals to 20. So let's say uh, when we print the value, printf, the value of num is equals to percentage d slash n. And we'll also print the address of num. The address of num is percentage d slash n. The address of num is given by ampersand num. So uh, let's run this and see what we get in the results. We build it. And we run. So it shows the value of num is 20 and the address of num is 6356748. Okay. Now let's define a pointer. We'll write int star ptr. So ptr is the name of the variable. Just like uh, the naming of any variable, this variable can also have any name. But it's good to have something uh, uh, something more meaningful like uh, num underscore ptr. So we know that we are storing the address of num in this. 
and we have mentioned a star here which means it is going to be a pointer and the int here signifies that we are going to store the address of an integer data type. Now let's say num underscore ptr equals to ampersand num. So what we are doing in this statement is we are taking the address of num and assigning it to num underscore ptr. So we'll check the same thing now. Here we are checking ampersand num. Here we will check only num underscore ptr. Let's run this. And you see both the places it shows the same value. One place was ampersand num, another place was num underscore ptr. So by doing this uh, statement num ptr equals to ampersand num, we took the address of num and stored it in num ptr. But how is this going to be useful for us? So what we do is when we assign the address of a variable to a pointer, this is called referencing. When we want to take the value from the pointer, we'll do dereferencing. We write a statement or we write the value the value of num is and we write star num underscore ptr when we write star and the pointer name that is dereferencing so what it will do is num underscore ptr signifies an address so it will go to that address and take the value stored in that location so if we run this we should see the value 20 here and we see the value 20 so star num underscore ptr was dereferenced and we got the value 20. This address 6356744 was stored in num ptr. When we wrote star num ptr, it went to this address and whatever value was stored in this address is displayed here. We can also use pointers to change the value of the locations. So after this, let's write uh, star num ptr with dereference it and we give it 50 we give it a value 50 so if we print the same statement again so we take this value we run it and we see that the value is changed it's 50 so we should see the same value when we print num so let's take this statement and print it again and we get the fi uh, value 50 here so what we did was we went to the uh, we took this address and by star we signified that go to this particular address and store the value 50 there so it took the address here we assigned the address here we took the address went to that location and gave it a value 50 pointers are very very useful when it comes to real life programming we can pass multiple values through pointers and just in the last module we saw functions where the functions can return one value but with the use of pointers we can make a function return multiple values we'll see that after we finish the pointers module and revisit functions now like we can change the value of variables we can also change the variable to which a pointer points let's take one more variable int num2 equals to 10 so now we'll write uh, let's say we write here num pointer equals to ampersand num2 and let's check all these values again. We'll check the value of num2, the address of num2 and the address of num2 through the pointer. We build it and we run it. So the value of num2 is 10. The address of num2 why is it showing okay the address of num2 here it should be num2 that was a mistake we build it and we run it again so the address of num2 here is 6356740 and the address of num2 through the pointer that we see is also the same 
Hi, I'm Vivek. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. Do like, share and comment. They are huge motivations. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll definitely try to answer them. Do subscribe to the channel. There are new videos and tutorials coming up. And don't forget to click on the bell icon so that you get a notification whenever there is a new video uploaded. Thanks and see you soon in the next video. Bye-bye.